Here's the eighth optimization problem. I think I'm planning to do 10 of them, so got a couple more even after this. We In this situation here, we have a rectangular flower garden has an area of 30 square meters. So that's the flower garden in here. They got a picture of the situation. It's surrounded by a grass border one meter wide on the two on two sides. So the below and above we have a one meter border. And the other two sides have a two meter wide border. What dimension of the garden, that's this thing, what dimension of this thing, what dimensions of the garden minimize the combined area of the garden and borders? So let's take a look here. I'm going to do some labeling. I think the horizontal distance of the garden, I'm going to call it X, and the vertical length of the garden, I'll call Y. What dimensions of the garden minimize combined area? of the garden and borders. So the combined area, that'll be our objective function. The combined area, well how wide is it across for the combined area? Well up here is x plus 4 meters stretching from this end to this end here. I've got x plus 4 because you've got x, the, the flower garden, but then you have 2 meters on either side of x. So 2 plus 2 is 4. Likewise, the height of the whole thing will be y plus 2 for the same reason, except these are just 1 meter borders. All right, see, so we're trying to minimize the combined area, so the objective function we'll call it A, equals the base of the combined area, that's x plus 4, times height, which is y plus 2. Now, it's clear that we, since we have two variables for the area function, we need to connect x and y somehow. And that's where the piece that comes in the very first piece is a rectangular flower garden with an area of 30 meters squared. So our constraint that is that xy equals 30. And then I'm able to get solve for y. I'll get y equals 30 over x. Now in real life, there's no reason why the x couldn't be zero, I guess, and then you just have a four foot by whatever foot line. <laughs> but it, it, it wouldn't be much of anything. The reason why I mention that is because when I plug this y equals 30 over x in, the objective function now becomes a function of x, and that is x plus 4 times 30 over x plus 2. Now what I'm going to do is multiply that out because it'll make taking the derivative easier than using the product rule. So a of x, if I just FOIL it out, I'll get x times 30 over x will just give me 30. And then x times 2 will give me 2x. 4 times 30 over x is 120 over x. I'm going to write it as x to the negative 1, just for the purposes of taking the derivative. And then finally, 4 plus 2 equals 8. So let me take the derivative. Oh, I should mention, what then what, what values of x are permitted here? Well, since you have 1 over x in this spot, x has to be a positive number. x cannot actually equal 0. Even though in the real life situation, 0 is a possibility, although that's never the answer that we're looking for. So, as far as I can really tell here, I'm just looking at positive numbers, like x's can be anything from um, 0 to infinity, just not including 0. But 0 and going to infinity are theoretical, mathematical constructions, uh, and they don't really apply to real-life situations so much. But when it comes to finding minimums or something on 
an interval, we have to know what kind of an interval we're, de we're dealing with, and we're not dealing with a closed and bounded interval. So I don't have endpoints. All I know is that the domain of this thing is that x is positive. So let me go ahead and take the derivative. Uh, the 30 goes away. I'm left with 2 minus 120 x to the negative 2. Now, of course, that 8 goes away. Set this equal to 0. I like to jump between uh, a negative exponent and a fraction, whatever I find it convenient. And I'll show you why in a minute I do that. So I'll rewrite this as 2 equals 120x to the negative 2, or 2 equals 120 over x squared. What I'm going to do is multiply through by x squared. So I get 2x squared equals 120. Divide by 2 x squared equals 60, and then x will equal the square root of 60. Now I need to know, have I achieved a minimum, which is what was the desired outcome? And since I can't rely on endpoints and comparing endpoints with a critical number, what I do is I'm going to use the second derivative test. And this time, I, this negative 2 will come down and make that positive 240 x to the negative 3. Now, since x has to be positive, this is always a positive number. What that means is this is greater than 0 for all the possible x's. So the function a of x is always concave up. That means that if you look on an interval from 0 to infinity, this thing at 0, I knew since there was something over x, the function's coming and doing something like this, and then going like this. So it's clear that whatever critical number we found has to be an absolute minimum, otherwise this wouldn't be concave up the whole time. So x equals radical 60 minimizes it x equals radical 60. And let me take a look at y. I'll get y back. Oh, I remember. x, y equals 30. So, and then y, in fact, was 30 over x, which equals 30 over radical 60, which equals, I guess I'll simplify. I, I mean, I really don't care that much. Uh, 30 radical 60 over 60, that is radical 60 over 2, and x is radical 60, or if you want, let me go ahead and, uh, 60 is 4 times 15, so I can write this as 2 radical 15, and then I can write this one down here as just radical 15. So, the answer, the dimensions. And it was in meters. I got to remember that. Two radical fifteen meters by radical fifteen meters.